Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Bridges channel. Today, I'm going to have a chat with Mateusz Lapinski. Let's find out who Mateusz is and why I'm delighted to have him here with us today. Mateusz is from Poland and he finished his Master in Civil Engineering in July 2020. With a bridge in Kurov over the river Dunacek, Mateusz won the Tekla Beam Awards competition for the student category in Poland. And as an intro, let me read what the jury of the Tekla competition wrote about Mateusz' project. This impressive beam model was prepared only by one very talented student from Warsaw University of Technology. The model is very well prepared with details on the best level. The bridge project was created as part of the master thesis, focusing on beam methodology and its application in infrastructure project. The presented bridge is currently being built in Malopolska province, Poland. The bridge will be located in Kurov and will be a crossing over the Dunacek River along the DK75 National Road connecting Novi Sach with Krakow. It is one of the best student models that we have ever had in this competition. No bad for an introduction. Mateus is just connecting online. Let's have a chat with him know more about Mateus and about his project. Welcome to the channel, Mateus. Um, I'm very happy uh, you accept the invitation to join the Ministry of Bridges. Uh, do you mind to uh, let the audience know a little bit more about you? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mateusz Wapinski, and I came from Poland, exactly from the capital uh, city, which is Warsaw. Uh, when I work on this project, I was student of uh, Warsaw University of Technology, Facu Faculty Civil Engineering. And this year, some months ago, I graduated uh, this school, obtaining my master degree in specialty bridges and underground structures. Uh, I started working. I started working professionally quite early, early, because right now I have four years of experience, and currently since. since Two years I've been working for WSP and on a daily basis I collaborate with colleagues from across the Baltic Sea. I mean uh, colleagues are from Sweden. Do you mind to to let us know uh, about mm. your amazing project? Okay sure. So I think uh, in my opinion it's quite interesting uh, history. Uh, one day phone rang and my supervisor asked me uh, if I would like to make an analysis for extra dose bridge, which soon will be erecting. Uh, my answer was, of course, that yes, especially <laughs> that uh, these kind of uh, bridges uh, from many, many years are in my area of interest. And I have to admit that I didn't think that I would be so involved uh, because the longer I work on the project, the more I wanted to include in it. This is how uh, I came up with the idea to, mod to model uh, the bridge in Tekla structures. And uh, my, my last word uh, when it comes to the range of the thesis was connection, uh, grasshopper and sophistic, which was uh, fortunately achieved. And in the same way, uh, my knowledge about workflow between very different software has grown uh, significant. That is completely brim, full bri brim, bridges yes. information modeling. At yes. the, uh, were you already working for WSP on that time? Yes, I had uh, okay. some experience uh, uh, with the structure, uh, structures, but when I decided to start working on it, the Grasshopper plugin for Rhino was completely unknown for me. Uh, I'm gonna uh, show you a short movie to visualize uh, how detailed details it is and in the meantime I will tell you uh, some technical aspects about uh, this bridge. 
the, de the design bridge will be the third longest extra dose bridge in the country in Poland and among the best extra dose bridges in the world. The theoretical span length of the bridge spans are 100 meters, 200, 200, 100. And the bridge is located in a vertical arch, one lane in each direction and a functional pavement with pedestrian and cyclist traffic, as well as technological were designed to enable bridge inspection a revision trolley was designed to monitor, of course, the bridge span. A single, a single chamber box section with a top flange width of around uh, 17 meters in span zones and 20, around 22 meters in pylon zones has been designed. And uh, there is a pylon on each intermediate support rising above the road level to a height of around 20 meters and there are two suspension planes in a fan arrangement when in where in each pylon on one side nine extra dose cables are anchored based on the pylon via sadu and what is i think interesting that the girders overall height is constant and equal to around four meters uh, before I forget, uh, is the bridge going to have any kind of uh, mon monitoring systems for uh, sensors and things like that? Yes, of course, sensors. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, of course. Uh, and uh, some additional equipment when it comes to weather condition uh, to to know how to influence on the uh, working of the bridge. Okay, so uh, now let's jump uh, into the most, I think, interesting part of my project. Uh, it's of course Tecla, Grasshopper and Sophisting uh, workflow. Uh, right uh, hand side uh, we can see Grasshopper, which is plugin for Rhino, which is on the other hand uh, seen on the, on the left side. On the uh, left side we can see parameterized extra dose bridge with force span and with the temporary uh, subforce. Everything in this uh, in this model is, as I said, parameterized. Here is something like launching bed on this side and on the other side uh, we can see launching nose because originally uh, bridge was designed to be erected uh, using span by span method but the contractor changed uh, erection method of the bridge into incremental launching so that's why here we can see launching bed and uh, uh, launching nose on the uh, other uh, side I would like uh, right now uh, show some changes uh, influence on the model uh, on the left side. So firstly, all of these elements that we can see on the left side is based on the alignment. We can see the alignment yes, and yes. let's let's change the alignment. Firstly, we would like to I would like to bake it and move the alignment manually. Okay and set one curve into this component okay and let's let's check uh, what will happen when every line will be put into new alignment okay and we can see that the bridge is uh, adopting to the new uh, uh, alignment for example so and here we can see a lot of uh, parameters that can be changed and let's do it uh, let's uh, make higher the pylon by 10 meters so we should yes we can see that it works and uh, what we can uh, for example we can change the angle angle when it comes to the pylon uh, right now we have uh, 15 uh, degrees to the outside of the uh, let's say plane uh, we can see that it right. works okay. uh, also fine yes but let's back to the hmm. 15 one for example and uh, we can also change the number of cables is being erected right now we will we'll, we'll have an nine cables but during the design process we can modify and optimize uh, 
yes. this number of cables as well. Yes. So as I said, let's back to the original version. And when it comes to the pylon has height as well. Okay. Uh, he, uh, I, I should uh, mention that uh, here on the top we can uh, we can see some components for Tecra, Sophistic and so on. And uh, at this moment the most important uh, for us is uh, this part for Sophistic. And here, uh, here we can see part uh, which is which is related to the Sophistic export and our calculation uh, model. Here we can uh, manually uh, define uh, some uh, mater materials and uh, basic cross-section. It, it looks like a PEDI file. And uh, here uh, we have a, a SophieMesh uh, component that gen genera generates our structure in uh, Sophisti. Is but, that geometry, ge geometry DAT, the file? Uh, geometry. Or the uh, geometry? It's uh, that file, I would say. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. then uh, we can uh, how, how to how to uh, say it? read to read the file. Yes. From, yes. Uh, load the file in Sophistic. Yes. Yes. Uh, firstly, okay. we have uh, load the file to the previous uh, created Teddy file, and here we have to set the file path, and then we can uh, reload it in uh, Sophistic. And here we, we can uh, decide if you want to full foundation or we want to uh, analyze the bridge uh, with simplified foundation. I mean, with the just with bearings without uh, piles and temporary columns and so on. Yes. So uh, let's uh, click full foundation. And right now uh, we would like to back uh, to the sophistic. And here we have to define some additional uh, input files. Uh, for uh, Aqua is responsible for the materials and cross section. So everything that we defined in Grasshopper is visible here, and uh, it works uh, something like that. And we have to uh, put Teddy file that will be loaded to the Sophistic structural desktop, uh, uh, yes, to the model, to the CD, uh, to the database. So uh, we can see yes. that uh, uh, here it's uh, it's calculated, but uh, yes. So let's jump into the Sophimesh C, which is responsible for the structure. I mean, for the uh, structural elements like cables, uh, quads, and so on. So it uh, needs to be calculated because we changed calculation model. Yes. Uh, so uh, right now we uh, we have to. A calculate Sophimesh, uh, Sophimesh C module because mm -hmm. previously we uh, changed the uh, model because we uh, we decided to uh, use full foundation as you uh, could see. So uh, now we would like to calculate Sophimesh C. Okay, uh, so we can see that the, uh, the mod model of the bridge is calculated uh, correctly. Correctly. And we should receive uh, something similar uh, to the Rhino uh, view. So let's check it. Okay, it looks quite good, brilliant, I would say. We can we can see cable uh, cable elements, quad elements, some uh, some uh, transverse elements that will transfer uh, pre-stressing force uh, to the uh, girders. And we have also uh, we can see also. Uh, temporary supports and so on, but in my opinion, we should back to the grasshopper again. So let's do it here. So I uh, I think that we should simplify the foundation, and uh, e and right now we have to all again calculate the bridge. Okay, so again we have calculated. Uh, bridge, but right now uh, we should get uh, without temporal support. So let's uh, check it out. Okay, it yes. looks uh, quite good. And then we have to define so loads, some loads. And firstly, we have to uh, define some kinds and characters, actions of the loads. 
And firstly, uh, we would I would like to show you how it works under uh, dead load. Let's calculate it. Did your professor understood uh, what you were doing or this was complete new technology for them? Uh, uh, of course, uh, Sophistic is now for him and he is a bridge designer as well. As well. Uh, so it is uh, something that uh, he understood well, but when it comes to the some um, beam uh, tools like Grasshopper, Rhino, Tecla, it's completely new for him. So yes, so I I, I would I, I would say that he learned more from me than <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yes. So you may be watching. You may be watching. You would say that your professor is uh -huh. now a supporter of this workflow. Yes, definitely. Yes, okay. he really appreciates it. Uh, he thinks that. Uh, it's uh, the future in this area of industry, yes, in bridge design, designing and uh, so on, yes. Right. right. And thanks to my uh, some work, uh, he decided to uh, um, run some uh, additional uh, lesson for the students on the university. So. Oh wow! Yes. Wow. Yes. 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 When it comes to the grasshopper. Uh, and Tecla. What, what do you think about the level of the students when they finish uh, the engineering degree? Are they in a great level that can, they can tackle uh, an exercise like this with uh, no problems? Or do you think mm -hmm. they still they have a, a, a long way to go and you are uh, the exception to the rule? Okay, I, uh, of course I know uh, Polish market, but when it comes to the Polish market, uh, yeah. I know that uh, Grasshopper, uh, something like uh, tools like Grasshopper uh, and Tecla, uh, generally speaking, uh, parameterized uh, tools are not uh, are not well known by the uh, students. So uh, I think uh, there is a long way to to make it more popular. And yes, but uh, my uh, my suggestion for the students is that, uh, that they uh, should be familiar with basic knowledge of programming language, of course, like Python, C Sharp, C++, and uh, so on, because our industry uh, is heading uh, towards a complex shape, and we need to support ourselves uh, in order to design uh, them using, for example, programming language. Yes. Yeah, so finish loading. Yes, uh, we can see that it's done correctly, and uh, we can check how the uh, how the bridge is uh, working under the dead load. Uh, mm -hmm. We right. can see that it uh, works quite good. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so wow. something else. Uh, because it's extra dose bridge, I think we should uh, define uh, loads uh, which is related to pre-stressing. So let's do that. So firstly, we can uh, do it uh, using as a module. Uh, we, uh, here we can uh, we have to define uh, some parameters like nominal pre-stressing force, sleep at anchorage, friction and uh, so on and uh, here we we can uh, see the input and let's uh, calculate just uh, this one extra dose cable pre-stressing uh, here you can see constr construction stages uh, manager which uh, is uh, will be uh, uh, which was uh, also created and uh, so the bridge was calculated as incremental launching, uh, uh, but I think it might be uh, uh, might be content for uh, next episode uh, with connection with Python. What do you think, Gabriel? Right. Yeah, yes, great idea. I was going to ask you something, but like that, uh, oh. because I think this is it is quite technical, and I think our audience uh, wants to know more about this. Mm -hmm. Not only nice pictures and. Uh, so this is hands-on, uh, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Uh, right now, let's back to the pre-stressing uh, cable and uh, check how it works. 
we can uh, make bigger amplitude to, to 400. Right. Okay. We can see that it works uh, as it should be, I think. Yes. Okay, as I, as I said, it's just to verify uh, the the our structure. Uh, yes, but when it comes to the CSM, Python, and uh, so on, uh, I hope we will see uh, after uh, New Year. Okay. And uh, we can also back to the uh, to the uh, Rhino, Grasshopper, and Tecla. Uh, Tecla workflow. The link be in between Grasshopper and Tecla works uh, also good. So let's make higher, for example, as before, uh, higher uh, pylons. And we can see that uh, it's adopting uh, also in uh, Tecla uh, structures. And my, let's make Let's make new alignment uh, for the uh, bridge. Yeah, it's, uh, it's changing. Yeah, directly in a Grasshopper, we can create uh, some assemblies in in uh, Tecla structures. So uh, here, uh, not here. Here we can uh, see assembly component and uh, the same we can see uh, in Tecla structures and based on these uh, structures of course we can create assembly drawings and uh, uh, so on so it's uh, something new and something uh, in my opinion uh, also very uh, very useful when it comes to the python uh, here i created a python uh, script which generates uh, which generates quad elements with variable thickness because it's not possible in uh, uh, in uh, this component uh, which is automated uh, built in uh, grasshopper uh, so to do that uh, we have to create uh, something new let's say and uh, here is something like that which generates uh, these elements okay yes. so just to, to wrap this one the this idea is the tools exist so you can already deliver let's say 95 percent of the work and the tools exist and mm -hmm. the connections uh, they exist so and uh, it's just healthy uh, to know a little bit of programming in order then to adapt the existing tools to the specific needs is more or less that then definitely like, definitely yeah yes okay so for sure it's 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 the future of our industry yeah all right uh one more question uh yeah. is then why uh tecla so why did you why you choose uh, tecla uh to to close this part of the workflow mm -hmm. uh, i i i have uh, some experience with revit and in my opinion uh tecla grasshopper and uh, this kind of workflow is the most uh, uh, useful for bridge engineering due to the fact that Grasshopper uh, works uh, fine, perfect with uh, Tecla and uh, Tecla also uh, uh, has a lot of uh, possibilities uh, when it comes to the size of the project. We need uh, software that uh, in that uh, it's possible uh, to do yes and uh, tecla of course uh, uh, has a, a lot of uh, components that are very useful and a possibility to create assemblies and uh, deliver it to the client uh, uh, we can also create some visualization and uh, a model of course a race more reinforcement with is so uh, there is a lot of uh, advantages was WSP that uh, uh, no, no, no. designed? No. no, it was designed by Peko, but uh, ah, yes, office right. in Poland. Office in Poland. Yes. All right. Okay. And just to clarify this, so what we see here today, uh, nothing of this was used 
than for the official design and official construction uh, of this bridge. Definitely, yes. Uh, the documentation okay. was preferred uh, using 2D drawing, uh, but right. it wasn't uh, based on 3D models, unfortunately. All right. Okay, so. coming from Sveco, that is a big surprise. Uh, I think uh, we have some friends that uh, we need to tell them and spread the word, uh, even within uh, the Sweco company. Uh, mm -hmm. Right, so you, here alone, uh, you created a, a project alone. Uh, it's yes. one-man job. This is one-man job. Definitely, correct? Yes. Right. yes, you are right. correct, yes. Um, uh, you were talking about visualization, right? Yes. And, uh, yeah, in tech structures, you have the visualizer. Uh, but uh, what about the common data environment, Trimble Connect? Did you use Trimble Connect uh, or with the IFC? Uh, yes, I used it, uh, but I think that uh, it's really, uh, really useful when it comes to the uh, uh, coordination meeting and so on. But uh, as, as you know, uh, I did it uh, alone, so uh, I, I didn't... Uh, uh, make uh, use of uh, this uh, tool. Okay, so here uh, we can see the bridge uh, under construction. Uh, we can see how big uh, this project is. We can see uh, launching nodes that I mentioned uh, before and uh, temporary supports uh, that will be removed uh, after pre-stressing Exodus cables. Yes, mm -hmm. and here we can see transfer uh, additional elements and transfer pre-stressing force into girders. Can you imagine the, the face of uh, the site workers if you were opening your laptop and mm -hmm. just uh, open Trimbo Connect with the IFC of the bridge there and just start showing them the, the bridge <laughs> and how the things are going to be done and look at the, you're doing this stuff and I have here the model, the beam model, but mm -hmm. you build this with 2D drawings. They know that I prepared something uh, like uh, Tekla models and uh, so on and I uh, I, I get I got invitation uh, to the building site. How do you see the beam or beam implementation uh, first in your country or the company and how do you see the future of this? Uh, maybe uh, firstly, uh, when it comes to the WSP, we we are working on uh, 3D models using Tecna structure, but it's not delivered to the uh, contractor. Uh, as soon as the contractors, they see the advantages mm -hmm. uh, and they, they start realizing they're having less um, RFIs issued uh, to the designer and so on, uh, they will come along. But the designers in this case, in my case, it was the contractors that put lots of pressure into the designers in order to have the constructible model. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe in Poland, Poland is a specific market where the designers need to kind of educate the, the contractors uh, for them to see the advantages. What was the biggest challenge you faced when you prepared uh, this uh, workflow? I think that the most challenging uh, for me was understanding uh, how data tree flow between many kinds of components uh, that are available in Grasshopper. Uh, I would like to add that uh, fact that the bridge uh, is located in curved arch, uh, it contributes uh, to many inconveniences during modeling and that's why uh, do, uh, we have to uh, make use of additional tools to model uh, accurately uh, bridge. And of course, sophistic software uh, is not uh, uh, the easiest one. So it was also it was also challenging for me, especially when it comes to the construction stage manager. But I like when you say sophistic isn't easy, right? Because Tecla isn't easy, right? Yes. So that's a, yes. that's a fact. But yes. uh, if you want to deliver, you need to use it. Right? Because you can choose uh, an easier tool and probably with that tool you couldn't uh, deliver the complete BIM model or you couldn't do the entire analysis in one single software, right? Yes. You need many softwares to, to add up. So it's more or less like that. No fear. No fear. No fear. Yes, no fear. Okay. What is the advice you have for the students that they, they want to tackle uh, theses and they want to tackle complex and things that never been done? 
Yeah, I think that uh, one advice that I can give my younger colleagues is do what you love and be engaged in 100% or 1000% and uh, remember that Albert Einstein said that 1% is talent and 99% is your hard work. And when I had had worst period, I repeated these words every time. It helped me, so it will you too. Yeah, and remember, uh, learn uh, uh, programming, programming uh, language a little bit, but learn. Yes, that's all. Where do you see yourself in five years' time? Mm -hmm. uh, in the future, I would like to get involved in a large infrastructure project as a beam coordinator, manager, or a bridge designer. And I have to admit that my dream is to leave the suspension bridge behind. And I hope that the projects that uh, I will be implementing in the next few years will bring me closer uh, to my goal. And I, of course, I'm open to international cooperation. <laughs> Mateus, thank you very much for uh, being here uh, with me and sharing your passion for bridges uh, and your project. And uh, I wish you all the luck for you personally and for your family and professionally. And I think professionally, you're not going to need any luck to be successful. Uh, yes, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, we can identify when someone uh, is going to do well uh, in life, in this case professionally, and uh, I'm pretty sure that personally too. So thank you very much, uh, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, giving your time. Thank you very much for having me here. Yeah, it was a definitely a pleasure to be part of your YouTube channel, and I hope uh, some people have been inspired and doubtless see you soon uh, during working on maybe international projects. For sure. Okay. Thank bye you very now. much. Thank you. Thank bye, you. bye bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I and please support your Ministry of Bridges channel by subscribing and selecting the notification bell. It's all for now, Bridges people. See you in the next episode and have a brimmer day.